Hey, it's your bro. I hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to teach you guys all about CSS. So let's get into it. So what is CSS? CSS is an acronym for Cascading Style Sheets. The purpose of CSS is to customize the elements of a web page to be displayed. And we can even use CSS to style multiple pages at once by linking separate independent HTML files to a single style sheet. So I've described our house analogy for building a web page in the past, but here it is one more time for any of you new people. So instead of building a web page, imagine that we are constructing a house while well, HTML adds structure to a page such as flooring, roofing, walls, support beams, the skeletal structure of the web page. CSS is like the decorations. It's the styling like paint, furniture, interior decorating, and JavaScript adds functionality to our house. We can include things like lighting, plumbing, heating, cooling, basic utilities, things that add functionality to a house. So this is a very good analogy, I would say, for a web page, but I'm a little biased because I made it up. There's three ways to include CSS for a web page. The first is inline, which we actually have some experience with already from the HTML tutorial. It's really only useful for adding a few custom elements. Internal, we create a pair of style elements in the head of our HTML document, useful for a single page website. And external, in my opinion, which is the best, we can link a CSS file to our HTML file to style one or all pages of a website, useful if you make a site with many, many pages. But don't worry, I'll give you a demonstration of how we can use each of these three. So there's a set of rules for declaring CSS properties. First, you'll want to identify the HTML element that you want to customize with CSS. This is an internal and external example. This wouldn't apply for inline. Uh, it's slightly different, but I'll give you a demonstration on that later. So here we have a CSS property that we want to change. So we need to list this followed by a colon and the value that we want to give this property. And then if you want to add multiple properties, you just separate each line with a semicolon. So it's simple as that. If you have an HTML document ready, then we can begin. Let's create some sample text first. Let's create a title for this page. And perhaps we'll use an H1 header. And I will type in the text CSS demo and close this. And let's create a sample paragraph. If you're using Sublime Text, you can just type in lorem and hit tab. And I would like to surround this with a pair of paragraph elements. Let's save, reload. All right, that's good enough so far. So let me give you a demonstration of the inline way of using CSS, which we have a little bit of experience with already. Now with the inline style of using CSS is that we can find an element that we want to customize, then we'll just type in style equals double quotes, and then we can place our CSS properties and values between these double quotes for style. Let's say I want to change the background color, I will type in the property of background dash color colon, and then I can set a color. You can either just use the name of one, or you can use a hexadecimal value. And let's say that I want this background to be black. Well, that would be all zeros then, so that would be six zeros, all right? Now we can add another CSS property, but we need to separate each with a semicolon, and I want to change the font color. So all text will have this colored font if it's within the body. So color, then colon, and then perhaps I'll just type in the word green because I don't remember the hexadecimal value for green. So let's save this, reload the page. All right, the background color is black and the text is green, just like we wanted. Now you can adjust these values too. Let's say that I want a slightly lighter shade of black. Well, I'll increase these hexadecimal values to perhaps all ones, I'll refresh the page. And the background is like a grayish black. No, it just got slightly brighter. And I'll change the color to, I believe a green color would be, let's see, zero, zero, then perhaps AA, zero, zero. I think that should be green. You can always look these up too. Just go to 
hexadecimal color picker or just look that up in a web browser. So that's like a slightly uh, brighter shade of green then, which I think is better. Uh, so you can adjust these values however you want or pick a custom color if there's a color theme you like. Now for this example, let's target a different HTML element instead of targeting the entire body of the document. So I'm just going to copy this and place it somewhere else. Let's say that we want to place this within our H1 header. Well, we would just put it within the opening header tag. It's the same process as before, really. For inline, you just type in style equals, then list the CSS properties you want to change and give it a value. So let's save this reload. And now what you see here is that only anything between these specific H1 header tags is affected by this CSS styling, leaving the rest of our web page clean and pristine then. Now pay attention to this. If we were to create another pair of H1 header tags, save this and reload the page, you'll notice that this pair of H1 header tags is left untouched basically by CSS. And that's because when you use inline CSS styling, it only affects anything between these two tags, no more, no less. And that's a perfect transition into our next topic, which is internal CSS styling. So with internal CSS styling, we can target all instances of a certain tag that is used, and it will be affected by whatever CSS properties we list there. This is what we do for internal styling, you need to write a pair of style tags between your head tags. So we're going to write style, and then we'll need to close this as well. All right. Next, we need to list the HTML element that we want to target with CSS. Let's say that we want to target any instances of us using paragraphs. So we're going to write the HTML element that we want to target. So in this case, it's P for the paragraph tags. Then we need a set of curly brackets. And within these curly brackets, we're going to list our CSS properties. So let's say that we want to change the background color and we will change that to the hexadecimal value of all ones, so six ones. Now, if we want to add another property, we'll need a semicolon and we can add another property on the next line. So color. And I liked the color 00AA00, which is green. So now if we save this, reload the page. Now, any instance of us using a pair of paragraph tags will be affected by CSS. Now, if I were to copy this paragraph and paste it directly underneath, then this paragraph would also be affected. Now, you can also target HTML elements that have a particular ID that you identify. So let's give each of these paragraphs their own ID attribute. So I'll call this paragraph one. And for the next paragraph, I will call this paragraph two. All right. So let's save this and reload the page. All right. So with our CSS styling, we're still targeting all paragraphs, but you can also target something with a specific ID. So in order to do that, you just use the uh, number symbol and then type in the ID that you want to target. Let's say that we want to target paragraph one. We'll use the number symbol and type in paragraph one. So let's save this reload. Now only paragraph one is targeted and it's leaving paragraph two alone because it has a different ID and we cannot uh, change this to paragraph two. And now only paragraph two is affected by CSS, leaving paragraph one not affected by CSS then. There's also a similar attribute to ID, but it's called class, and this is reserved for a unique grouping for parts of your web page. So for our H1 header, let's create a class, and perhaps we'll call this maybe top, like the top of the web page, and maybe we'll throw in, I guess, uh, the first paragraph within this class as well. All right, so now, we can actually target an entire class, but you need to put a dot here, then the name of the class. So we want to target anything with the class of top. So let's save this reload. And now our internal CSS is targeting anything with the class of top then. So that's useful if you want to target a specific section of your web page, and it includes many different types of elements then.
And you can take this a step further too, although this is a little more complex. You can list a specific HTML element and you can have it target something within a certain class. Right here, we typed in p.top. We want to target any paragraph tag that also falls within the top class. So what ends up happening is that it only targets this paragraph. And with our CSS, we're only targeting this specific paragraph because unlike this paragraph, it has this class of top then, which we listed as a target. Any paragraph tag that has the class of top. And one other trick available to you is that if you want to have multiple HTML elements with these same exact properties, you can just list all of them, but you have to separate each element with a comma. Let's say that we want to target any instances of H1 tags, as well as paragraph tags. We would just list these here, separate each that you want to add with a comma. So this will target all H1 tags and paragraph tags. And last but not least is the external method of CSS styling. So we're actually going to create a separate CSS file where we're going to list all the different elements that we want to target and the CSS properties that we want to apply. So if you're using Sublime Text, you can just go to File, New File, and I'm immediately going to save this. So File, Save As. Name this whatever you want. You can place this within the same folder that contains the web page you're working on. If it's in a different location, you just have to know the file path. And you can name this whatever you want. I'll just call it maybe something simple as style, but you have to make sure it's a CSS file. So I'm just going to add .css. Otherwise you can always change the save as type too. All right, and now it's the same process as before with internal styling. But we don't actually need to include those pairs of style tags. We can just list all the HTML elements that we want to target. Let's say that we want to target any H1 tags. We'll just type in that there and then use a set of curly brackets. And then we list all of our CSS properties here. So let's change the background color to whatever we want. I liked the color 111111. That was like a lighter shade of black as well as the font color, and I liked the color 00AA00. All right, and then let's do the same thing for uh, the paragraph tags. Perhaps I'll choose a slightly different color though for the font color. Um, maybe let's make this a brighter green, so that's 00, maybe FF00, okay? Now we'll want to link our web page to this CSS file. So what we're going to do between the head tags is use this link tag. And there's a few attributes that we need to include within this link tag. The first is REL, which is short for relationship. This states the relationship between this document and the mentioned linked document. And we're going to type in style sheet. All right. Next, we're going to type in the type attribute. And this specifies the media type. It's not required, but it's considered good practice to include this. And we're just going to type text slash CSS. And then lastly, we're going to type in href, which stands for hypertext reference. We will place either the file name or the file path or the URL of the CSS file that we want to link here. So that was style.css. Let's save this, reload, and boom, we have CSS. Now the external method of CSS styling is extremely useful because all you would need to do is have a single CSS file and all you would need is just to include this link to each web page that you want to style with these CSS properties. So imagine you have a website with like 50 different pages. You wouldn't have to type all of this in on every single page. You can just link each of these 50 pages to this one specific CSS file. So that will conclude this primer to CSS. If you would like a copy of each of these documents we worked on today, I'll post all of this in the comments down below and pin it to the top if you would like to take a look. But yeah, that is your introductory lesson to CSS.
Hey you, if you enjoyed this lesson, then you can help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.